Hello again. Last time we learned how to find slacks and floats for a given network. Today we'll practice once again. Last time I understand it took us around an hour or so to understand the basic procedure. This time we'll see how fast the process actually can be. So let us again memorize our steps. First step is finding various possible paths from first to seventh event. We have a one, two, four, seven. That is ADF, ADF. Then we have a BCDF, BCDF. And what would be the duration for this path? It would be 8 plus 9, 17. 17 and 4, 21, 21 and 3, 24. So our path would be B, C, D, F with the duration of 8 and 9, 17 and 4, 21 and 3, 24. What is the duration for first one? ADF. It was 5 and 4, 9 and 3, 12. Then we have another path. B, E, G, F. It is B, E, G, F. And duration for that path is 8 and 8, 16, 16 and 4, 20 and 3, 23. Then we have another path B E H I B E H and I. What is the duration for this path? Eight and eight sixteen, sixteen and nine, twenty five, twenty five and eight, thirty three. So durations are thirty three. So we have a path ADF with duration 12, then there is a BCDF, duration 24, then there is a BEF, BEGF, duration 23, last one is BEH, I, duration 33. Done with all the paths. Now, which one is the critical one? This path is the critical one. It is the longest path. So what we do, last time we saw, we should represent BEHI, that is the critical path with a double line. Right? Here we go with our double line. Right? So B, E, H and I is my critical path. Now, we need to set priority, reference, in what order am I going for these paths, forward pass and backward pass. 33 being the longest one, first I will travel through this path, then 24, then 23, and last one would be 12. So this will be my order in which I will be making forward passes and backward passes. What are forward passes? Forward passes are when we travel from first activity to last, adding all the durations, adding all the respective durations that we come across. And then what is the backward pass? We move along the very same path from last event to the first event, subtracting the respective durations. And the sequence that we'll be following is this. First, BEHI, second, BCDF, third, BEGF, and fourth one would be ADF. Why are we taking this sequence? Because we always go in descending order of their durations. Now, let us start with our forward pass of forward pass and backward pass of first path. We'll make it a quick one this time. What do we have? BEHI. If I start at 0, 0 plus 8 will give me an 8. 8 plus 8 will give me a 16. 16 plus 9 will give me a 25, 25 
and it would give me a 33. This is my forward pass. Then let me start my backward pass immediately. I have to get here by 33. So I should start I by 33 minus 8, 25th. I have to start I by 25th so that I can get here by 33. In order to finish H by 25, I have to start H by 16 so that I can get here. Again, to finish E by 16th, you have to start it by 8th. And what about B? In order to finish B by 8th, you have to start it by 0. So this was a forward pass and a backward pass on our critical path BEHI. Next in our priority list is BCDF. Where is BCDF? We see here BCDF. This is our path BCDF. Now let us start our path forward pass 0. Remember this is the forward pass 0, not this one. 0 plus 8, 8. Again not this 8, only this 8. So 0 plus 8 is 8. 8 plus 9 would give me a 17. 17 plus 4 would give me a 21. 21 plus 3 would give me a 24. So should I write 24 or leave it as 33? I should leave it as 33. Why? Because in a forward pass, if we are in doubt, if there are two values, the larger one is selected. Now immediately, once I am through with the forward pass, let me start my backward pass on B, C, D, F. 33 is the time to finish. So to meet this 33, 33 minus 3, I should be here by 30. To be here 30, at 30 I should start by 30 minus 4, 26. Then 26 minus 9 would give me a 17, but no, I'm going with 8 because it is a backward pass. And 8 minus 8 would give me a 0. So I'm done with the backward pass and forward pass on these two paths. Now let me see if something happens on B, E, G, F. We have B, E, G and F. Let us see. 0 and 8, 8. 8 and 8, 16. 16 and 4, 20. Should I write a 20? No. It will be 21 because we are in a forward pass. Okay, so I will leave it as 21. 21 and 3, 24. Should I write a 24? No. It will be 33 because we are in a forward pass. Let us jump to the backward pass. We have a 33. 33 minus 3, 30. Then 30 minus 4, 26. Should I write a 26 over here? No. In a backward pass, we write the smaller of the values. So we will leave it as 16 instead of 26. So we have a 16 over here. 16 minus 8 is 8 and 8 minus 8 is 0. So we are through with our third path also. Fourth one is ADF. This top one. Let us see what happens. 0 plus 5, 5. No. There can be no 5. Instead it will be a 17. 17 and 4. 21, 21 and 3, 24, should I write 24? No, it will be a 33. Then let us jump to the backward pass, 33, 33 minus 3, 30, very good, 30 minus 4, 26, well done, 26 minus 5, 21, no, there will be no 21, rather it will be a 0 because instead of 21 I will put a 0, the smaller of the values. So, now we are done with forward pass and backward pass on all paths. Let us go ahead and find slacks and floats for all the activities. Now, if you remember, the critical path, this one, we last time also saw these activities always have zeros. All slacks and floats are zeros for them. Let us see if that is the case this time now. What can we see? B. B at slack is 8 minus 8, 0. 0 minus tail slack is 0 minus 0, 0. So the head slack will be 8 minus 8 is equal to 0 for B. 
what about tail slack it will be 0 minus 0 0 minus 0 that is again a 0 what about total float of P what was that latest finish time minus earliest start time minus duration this is what we call total float so latest finish time or in other words extreme times the last time and the first time that is 8 and 0 what do we get 8 minus 0 and then we will have minus duration so it will be 8 minus 0 minus 8 giving a total load of 0 as expected this should have been 0 what about C uh, rather we will take E first we will go with E what about E E is at slack is 16 minus 16 0 tail slack is 8 minus 8 0 so once again we have E with head slack and tail slack of 0. What about total float? 16 minus 8 minus 8. Isn't that the case? Yes, it is. Latest finish time is 16 minus earliest tire start time is 8 minus duration is 8. So it will give me a 0. Fine. Then we have H. H would be 0 as at slack, 0 as tail slack, 0 as head slack, 0 as tail slack and then its total float will be 25 minus 16 minus 9, 25 minus 16 minus 9. What is 25 minus 16 minus 9? It is 0 and last one is i. Head slack is 33 minus 33, 0. 25 minus 25, 0. So for I also we see that both head slack and tail slack are 0. What about the total float? Total float we will have to check. 33 minus 25 minus 8. 33 minus 25 minus Eight, which will give me a 0 for sure. So, we have once again saw that all the critical activities, they have same slack floats. The value, that same value is 0. Now, what about free floats? So we will find free floats a bit later. Let us take A now. What do we have for A? Head slack as 26 minus 17. 26 minus 17 is 9. Very well said. 0 minus 0 would give me a 0. Perfect. Let us run through all of these. C. Head is, this is C, this is head, this is tail. So what do we have for C this time round? 26 minus 17. 26 minus 17 is, once again, 9. C's tail is over here, which is 0. For D, I have 30 minus 21 as head. 26 minus 17 as tail. So once again, both the values for D would be 9. F, where is F? Here we have head as 0, tail as 9. Isn't that the case? Head as 0, tail as 9. And last one is G. Head as 9, tail as 0. Head as 9, tail as 0. Now let us find out total floats for A. Total float for A would be 26, latest finish time minus earliest start time, start time of 0 minus duration. 26 minus 0 minus 5. What do we get? Exactly 26 minus 5 minus 0 is 21. Then we have a C 26 minus 8 minus 9. 
what do we get 26 minus 8 minus 9 how much is it 26 minus 8 minus 9 that would give me a exactly 9 c would give me a 9 then we have d 30 minus 17 minus 4 30 minus 17 minus 4 how much is that again a 9 d gets another 9 then we have f f is 33 21 and 1 so what do we do 33 minus 21 33 minus 21 minus 3 giving me another 9 the last one is g what do we get for a g 30 minus 16 minus 4 30 minus 16 minus 4 giving me a 10 this time for the change we have a 10 isn't that special thing for the first time we are getting a 10 amongst all these nines 30 minus 16 minus 4 so now that we have head select done tail select done total flow done now we have very simple formula for free float and independent float what were those free float is equal to total float minus head slack and independent float is equal to free float minus tail slack fine so free float is total float minus head slack so for first it will be 21 minus 9 giving me a 12 0 minus 0 9 minus 9 9 minus 9 we can just run through them the last one is independent float free float minus tail slack giving me a 12 minus 0 0 minus 0 so we are getting uh, negative independent float that's it so you can see once again that all critical activities B E H and I B E H and I you can see all these are all these are zeros. There are no head slacks, tail slacks, none slacks, none floats. Everything is zero because critical activities do not have any kind of leverage. They are stuck with the tightest possible schedule. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.